Welcome to another video from Sporty Cyclist. Now, fair warning, this video is going to be a bit niche. If you've been following this channel, you'll know that I'm in the process of renovating my Trek Domain 4.3 road bike. Basically, in this video I'm going to talk you through my research on the parts and tools I've needed to buy to overhaul my bike. It's going to be a bit Excel and online bike shop heavy. If you're just joining, this isn't the one to start with, so why don't you check out the first videos in the series. So if you're interested in hearing about my thought process as I went about buying all the bits, then feel free to watch. If the thought of me talking through a list of bike parts strikes you as tedious, probably one to skip. Now let's get into the detail. In this section of the video, you're going to see the side of me that enjoys a good Excel spreadsheet. On the left hand side here, we can see all of the parts and the tools that I'm going to need in order to renovate my Trek domain. The bearings for the headset I found pretty early doors in my research. So here we have them. I want the green one here at the back. That's the one that shot. Uh, I don't believe I can get one without other. Moving on to the bottom bracket, my Trek domain has what's known as a BB90, which is I think a Trek designed bottom bracket and it certainly seems to get a fair amount of negative press. The reason being the bearings themselves are pressed into the carbon shell of the bottom bracket. They're not screwed into place. The fact that they are pressed directly into the carbon frame means that over time potentially they can cause wear and tear where they're seated. This is the specific Trek kit and the reason I want to go for the Trek kit is because I want to make sure it fits without risking either breaking the carbon or the bearings being slightly too small that can cause creaking when we come to riding the bike and here I'm looking at Sigma Sport for those £45 is not cheap. Going back to one of my previous videos, I somewhat hastily cut all of the cables, both the gears and the brakes, so I need to get replacement cables. The good news is that since I'm not going for anything particularly fancy, they're pretty reasonable. £20 at Wiggle doesn't seem too bad. Wait a minute. It was £13 then. Maybe if I log in, let's see. Huh. Bummer. Should have bought them last week, so that's now 90. We've also got some brake pads, which I'm after. I think it's the Salmon ones, 7.99. It says high quality replacement inserts for Shimano cartridge brake roadblocks. Next, the gear cables, similar sort of setup. So we've got the road shift cable set. You've got the inner wires for the two cables. You've got the black outer casing and all the end caps and whatnot. I think it sort of shows you the bits that you crimp at the end. I think you might call these ferrules. Never had cause to say the word until the recording of this video. What else? Bar tape. I won't particularly bore you with that, but I'll be going to get that. The chain, I compared an Ultegra chain with a KMC X10 EL, the EL standing for extra light. Much as I'd love to go for gold again. What? Out of stock. Something tells me I should have bought this stuff earlier. Well, looks like I might be going for the Ultegra 10 speed chain after all. Components that are 10 speed Shimano 105 also work with Dura Ace and Ultegra, so you can pick and choose from different parts of that range in order to suit your budget. On that subject, for the chain rings, I've decided to stick at the 105. So I will be going with a compact chain ring and I think I've got black currently. So I'll be getting the, uh, the 50 speed here. 105 components that are 10 speed will start with the numbers five and seven. So the range is generally described as 5700 and the Ultegra equivalent is what? Six, 700. So we've got 10 speed. I don't appear to have got the link for the 34. Actually, maybe it's the same link. Let's have a shifty. Did it? Did it? Oh, well that's not ideal. It would appear that there is not the 34 tooth chainring available in black. Mont will have to go elsewhere. Cassette wise, I am mostly driven by the desire to have quite a wide range of gears. I'm not so bothered at the smaller end of the uh, cassette. So 11 or 12 is fine by me. I'd like the biggest sprocket in the cassette to start with a three. This is the Tiagra, so we're actually stepping down a notch if we go for this one. I think I'll go for this one, the 1132. The alternative 
is the Shimano Pen Speed cassette. But if we look at the 105 first, here, yeah, yeah, it's only available in an 11, 28, and we're stepping up to 42, 43 pounds versus what did we say? Is it 20? Eight pounds. If you actually move up to the Shimano 6700 10 speed cassette, you've got a much broader range of. Ah, there we go. So it's a 1230, not an 1130. 59 quid starts to look pretty pricey. Can't imagine there's a great deal of difference. 208 grams versus. Oh, it doesn't give us a weight. There's probably not much in it. Pulley wheels. So these go in the rear derailleur. They don't cost a great deal, so I think I'll get a new set of those. Moving over to the tools now, certainly the cable cutters I think are a worthwhile investment for choice. I'll generally aim these days to try and get park tool tools, even though they're a bit more expensive. They are built to last and also they're blue and used by professional mechanics and therefore they've got that little cool factor. Gable cutters, you've got the cutter there and also this piece here which is used for crimping those little end caps on the end of cables. Now the next two items are slightly less obvious. If I wasn't trying to make a video and trying to generally improve my bike maintenance skills. These are probably tools that I wouldn't choose to buy and instead I put the bike into a professional mechanic at a bike shop, get them to do the job in question and uh, wouldn't need these. In order to get the existing bearings out of the bottom bracket on my bike, you need to use this tool. I'm not sure it's necessarily hugely obvious as to how it works. I will save that exciting task for you to see me try it in the flesh. 45 pounds, I guess that's not too bad in the grand scheme of things. So the BB90 bottom bracket standard is not commonly found on too many bikes. Indeed Trek themselves are phasing it out of their newer road bikes. Query how much use I'm going to get out of this particular tool, particularly if I buy a different bike in the future. On the other hand, maybe having invested a little bit of money in the right tool for the job will encourage me to pay more attention and replace the bearings in the bottom bracket as and when they start to get a little bit grindy. We'll see. Finally, going back to the list, this is the most interesting one. In order to push the bearings that I'll be purchasing up here into the frame, having removed the old ones, you need to buy a bearing press. If you go for the uh, Park Tool BBP 1.2, which is the mother of all bearing presses, I think we're talking the neck end of. £225, even though I'm prepared to invest in uh, the bike. I think that seems a bit on the toppy side. So I've looked at this one, which is the HHP3. Now this can be used both for headsets here and for bottom brackets. I mean, it's fine. These two pieces of this bearing removal tool includes the two components that are correctly sized to press in the new bearings but I also found universal bottom bracket press tool, as it's called here, oh, which is now out of stock again. Well, that would have been the one that I bought. I don't know if it's obvious here. On the press itself, you've got different diameter discs. Those would fit whatever size bottom bracket diameter you have. So the bearings themselves are pressed into the bottom bracket straight, such that uh, well one they go in and two they don't cause damage to the bottom bracket as you're doing it more research required so let's start at the top and start buying let's mark them green Okay, fine. This hasn't been the most successful of shopping exercises. I was hoping to get this all done in one go. I still don't have some new chain ring. Big news, Google is your friend. I found on 
the SJS Cycles website both of the chain rings that I need. Let's go for that one. It's the black, the big one, the 52, and the basket. There we go. Winging its way from Somerset. Right, so now we're close. We still have to get our gear cable set, the bearing press. We will await an email, hopefully, from Sigma Sport. Good news, I've found a website that purports to have the Wheels MFG Professional Bottom Bracket Press available, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, buy it. Seem to have got the order confirmation, so uh, fingers crossed it'll turn up in a couple of days. I'll let you know. So I'm pleased to report that all of the parts and the tools have arrived successfully. I've checked them against my spreadsheet, and here they are. Beep, beep, beep. So, join me in the next video when I put them all on the bike. I've been Monty, you've been watching Sportive Cyclist, the Mammal XL channel, and I'll see you in the next video.